Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Streaming Alchemy Show. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at two of PTZ Optics' new EPTZ cameras. And these are really very different from anything else that's out on the market. So there are two models of the EPTZ cameras that have been released so far. The first one is a Z-Cam. And the Z-Cam model right up here uh, basically follows the same form factor as their current optical Z-Cam. Z uh, the other model is a webcam form factor, essentially. And this is put out by HuddleCam. HuddleCam is a division of PTZ Optics, and they produce for more the conference market. So this is something that they basically are two very similar cameras, but focused on different marketplaces. But I think the real thing is, what makes an EPTZ camera different from a traditional Z-cam? So, if you look at the Z-cam here, what you actually have up front is an optical component with real lenses that can move to create different uh, focal lengths, and that touches an image sensor in the back. And the framing of the image is controlled by the optics up front in the camera. In the EPTZ, it works really differently. It has a fixed focal length in the EPTZ, so there's just one focal length. But the difference is that the camera itself now has a very high resolution sensor. In this case, these are 4K, UHD 4K sensors in these cameras. So the way the camera operates is it has a fixed focus on the high resolution lens and then electronically allows you to cut out a piece of that sensor image and send that out. So it provides Basically, a lot of what you get from a virtual webcam, where we've shown that before inside of software, but now it builds it all into the single camera body. So you can control it from any type of setup, even if that isn't a feature inside your software. So the imaging specs on this are actually pretty impressive. So I believe both uh, of the HuddleCam HD and the EPTZ Zcam both use the same 4K sensor, and the optics are, are, are relatively uh, similar. The field of view is a little north or south based on the camera of 105 degrees uh, on the horizontal field of view and about 70 degrees on the vertical field of view. So it, it can take in a very wide image. If you looked at this as uh, an equivalent uh, focal length in a full frame, this would be somewhere between an 11 and a 12 millimeter lens uh, focal lens. So very wide view that you get in that. And with the 4K sensor behind that, it actually has a lot of detail, gives you a lot of detail to work with in the electronics, which send out these cropped 1080 signals out of the 4K feed. So I think the key thing here that really differentiates this is that not only does it allow you to send out a cropped image, but it lets you send out two images. So this model that we have has dual SDI outputs. And with the dual SDI outputs, you have one SDI, which is always feeding the full image. So this would be sort of your go-to image if I needed to create an establishing shot, show a whole stage, show uh, you know, a, an altar in a church. That would be the wide shot that I could always go to. But it also has a second SDI shot that goes out with that concurrently. So you end up now having the ability to keep a wide shot always available and have a zoomed in shot focused on any type of subject you want. So effectively, you get with a single camera what you would normally need dual cameras to do if you had an optical PTZ, where the, the head actually has to swing around. The way that's usually leveraged is you have a fixed shot that you'll go to. And then when that fixed shot is up, you'll adjust the zoom on the PTZ so you can refocus it, reframe a shot, and then switch to that. And so this gives you that, but now all in one camera. So really impressive what they've done there. Uh, the other thing about this camera 
and in fact about both of the EPTZ cameras that uh, PTZ Optics has provided, is that they also, even though we in this case have the uh, SDI version, it isn't the NDI version, it still has the ability for you to take a stream over the network using RTSP, or it also supports RTMP, but for you know, sort of capture RTSP is really great. So here in VLC, we have the ability to pick this up as a network stream using VLC's network capture capabilities. So if I switch over here and go to open network stream in VLC, you end up now having the ability to just type in an IP address and a stream ID that you actually wanna pull into VLC. So in this case, I'm taking stream three in from the Zcam. And you can see behind me, if I just cancel out of this, you can see everything that's here. Uh, and it's a slight latency on this because RTSP is not quite as real time as something like NDI, but it definitely in certain use cases could be very valuable as just having this as to capture over the network. So if you also notice, let me go back in here with opening the network stream, I can go here. I can also pick other streams that are available inside the camera. So stream two is another stream that basically is similar framing, but lower resolution. So this is a 640 uh, by 360 frame. And if I want to, I also have the ability, oh, wrong one there. I also have the ability to go in and capture the zoomed in frame. So let me go here and that should be number one, I believe. So now this is the zoomed in video. So even though I'm doing all this stuff out of SDI, I still have a full resolution, full frame feed coming out of the camera. I have the cropped frame feed coming out of the camera, full resolution. And I also have a low resolution reference feed coming out of the camera. So all this is happening at the same time as those two SDI feeds. So very, very impressive for the types of things that you may want to do in a more complex production. The other thing, though, that's, that's really interesting is that uh, everything that we've shown here actually applies to the huddle cam as well. So if we switch over and take a look at the huddle cam here, what you'll find is that it actually has a very, very similar form factor that you would get to uh, any type of webcam, but it is much bigger. Now, the Huddle Cam HD with the EPTZ capability actually has uh, dual outputs, but those things are also just network-based RTSP. Uh, if you are just going out of the single output, which is the either the HDMI or in our case, this is NDI, uh, you actually can get the zoomed in feed. So basically where you have the dual outputs on the huddle cam, on the uh, Z cam, the huddle cam has one physical output, but still has the dual outputs internally for the, the two RTSP web streams that are going on. So the huddle cam is really designed more for the web conferencing market, where if I had multiple people sitting around the table and I wanted to be able to zoom in and grab different shots of these individuals talking over a web conference. This would be ideal for something like Zoom. Though both cameras could work that way, you know, this is really targeted with that. And it actually sits on top of a monitor. So you can just place it on a monitor uh, and have it, you know, fill that same webcam style role, you know, in the physical way you, you, you mount it. So uh, very, very cool with that. The fact is this also sends out NDI, and so if I uh, were to look at what, what options I have with, with NDI here, this is coming in through NDI, the huddle cam 1080p 30. The video quality is actually really good for a camera this small and at these price points. So with NDI, this camera is about $500, but uh, with, uh, without NDI, with just HDMI, this camera runs for a lot cheaper. So it's probably about 300 $50, something in that ballpark. So very, very cost efficient as a camera. You also have the ability to control this camera as a PTZ camera. 
So I could go in and zoom out and zoom in. And now this is doing the electronic zoom, the EPTZ part of the EPTZ camera uh, is, is what's being controlled using the SDI, using the uh, NDI studio monitor here. And that gives you all the capabilities you'd have where you could set up presets and everything else. But the other thing that both the Zcam and the Huddlecam HD allow you to do is you can use PTZ Optics own uh, controller apps, which are available for free on their website. And this will let you control multiple cameras, uh, basically switching between them and using whatever controls you need. So all of this control is taking place through a single connection, because this is an uh, NDI camera. So all of the controls that we're gonna use with both the NDI Studio Monitor and with the PTZ Optics own application are all going across the single connection. So if you look over here on the side panel, uh, the same way I have all these controls here, I have similar controls right here. I also have presets which give me a little thumbnail. And these presets, and this will show you the real difference between a, a, an optical PTZ and an EPTZ, these will do direct cuts. So now, as I switch between these, these would be the exact type of cuts that I could do if I had multiple cameras. And this is all controlled through a single camera and a single wire. So very, very cool way to think about substituting multiple cameras with single cameras for very specific types of shots you wanna do, especially shots that involve a group. So this is really cool in, you know, collectively, but there's other ways to do this type of control too. PTZ Optics also sells a small $10 application for your iPhone that will also let you do these types of camera controls. So this application is really very streamlined. So if you are actually being the host of a show and you don't have the ability to have a screen and everything else in place, you can actually just use this application here to do any types of things you want where you'd zoom in and zoom out. If you look in the lower left-hand corner of the screen here, I can also have different types of shots that I have set up in advance. So this will zoom in uh, and you can sit here and do these types of shots. And this is all be controlled from my iPhone. Uh, and this iPhone can be untethered. I have it plugged in for purposes of the show here, so it didn't run out of battery. But if I wanted to do this where I was just walking around and sort of doing a talking thing, I could just have this on a pedestal somewhere and just touch these as I needed to, totally unwired. So another very cool way that you have to control it. So three ways, studio monitor, the desktop application, and a mobile application. So. The last thing I want to show you, which I think might be one of the coolest surprises in all of this, is that these PTZ cameras also can deliver true 4K video signals. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump into the admin page of the EPTZ huddle cam. So let me just jump in here. So one of the things you'll see is they have the three streams, which we, we mentioned are available, but it also gives me the ability to change the resolution of those streams. So in this case, you'll notice that I have 3840 by 2160. So that is one of the resolutions that are available here. So I can do that. I can also select H265. Uh, so this gives me a, it takes a little more compute effort, but it gives me a higher quality for lower bandwidth types of signal. But the one compromise I have to make is I actually have to go and turn EPTZ, the EPTZ capability, I have to turn that off. But now with these settings done, I'll go to apply. And what it's gonna tell me is I need to reboot the system in order to, uh, the camera, in order to make this happen. So if I go over to system menu and click on reboot here, the 
camera will now go away. But what I will get is when this camera comes back up, I will have a 4K video signal coming out of this camera. And probably the thing that's going to be even more impressive about this. So here I've reset the studio monitor to none. So we can see all the new feeds that came in. And now I see the Huddle Cam HD, which we just reset. And when I bring that in, what you'll notice up here in the top, a little hard to see, but what it says here is 2160 30p. So what I actually have here and what I'm demoing for you from right across the desk from me is PTZ Optics first 4K camera uh, to be released. And so this is really exciting. I now not only have all the capabilities baked into this camera as an EPTZ camera, but it also can come in and fill the role as a 4K camera and a great wide angle shot. So this could be something you could put in front of a stage as a 4K feed that would cover most of the actors, most of the speakers, most of the ministers that may be involved in sort of a shot that broad. So really, really exciting here what you can get, especially since this is, uh, you know, as 4K, a perfect fit for things like the higher end versions of vMix, as well as uh, the, the new TriCaster lineup, which all support 4K sort of as a, as a standard. So a lot of flexibility here. So hopefully you found this interesting. I'm really excited about these cameras. I think that both of them are really excellent additions to whatever sort of production rig you have, mainly because they're great utility cameras. You can use them in so many different scenarios and they're also not terribly expensive. I think the uh, if you don't go for the NDI versions, they're running about $350 and $500 for the Huddle Cam and the Z Cam. So it's something that if you know your budget allows for that, it can be an effective, a very cost-effective tool uh, for to add with the other cameras that you have. And it, it blends great with any of the other PTZ Optics cameras that you may already have as part of your production gear. So that's everything for our show next week. We're going to be taking a look for the first time at SRT, Secure Reliable Transport. It's a protocol that's really growing in popularity. It's been embedded in the latest release of vMix. And now there's also an ingest, cap an ingest capability for it, the ability to take in an SRT feed in the most recent releases of TriCaster software. So very exciting technology that we're going to be talking about next week. So until then, be safe, be well, see ya.